please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Please remain standing for a moment of silent prayer for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all of those who have passed away in our community. Please also remember to keep in your prayers Tony DeBilio, um, a lifelong Scrantonian who was, who was shot last, last night, two nights ago, um, and our prayers are with him and his family. Roll call, please. Mr. Perry? Here. Mr. Donahue? Here. Mr. Evans? Here. Mr. Gaughan? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A, minutes of the regular meeting of the members of the Scranton Housing Authority, held January 8, 2018. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, controller's report for month ending January 31, 2018. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Tax Assessor's Report for hearing date held February 21, 2018. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, Minutes of the Scranton Firefighters Pension Commission meeting held January 17, 2018. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, Minutes of the Non-Uniform Municipal Pension Board meeting held January 17, 2018. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3F, minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Commission meeting held January 17, 2018. Any comments? Received and filed. 3G, minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held January 17, 2018. Any comments? Received and filed. 3H, agenda for the Non-Uniform Municipal Pension Board meeting held February 21, 2018. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3I, agenda for City Planning Commission meeting to be held February 28, 2018. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do any council members have announcements at this time? Uh, yes. Uh, I'd just like to announce that the Scranton St. Patrick's Day Parade will be Saturday, March 10th. Uh, today's festivities will kick off with Mass at the Cathedral at 10 a.m. Uh, the Brian Kelly Memorial Foot Race will begin at 11 a.m. and the parade steps off from in front of the cathedral at 11:45. Uh, the deadline for entry in the to put an entry in the parade is this upcoming Wednesday, February 28th. Uh, if you want to submit an entry into the parade, you could go to uh, stpatparade.com. Thank you. Uh, two items. One, an executive session was held earlier to discuss a matter of litigation. And secondly, a public hearing will be scheduled for item 5C to establish permit parking on the 900 block of Olive Street. This hearing will take place on Monday, March 5th at 5.15 p.m. Are there any other announcements? Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker tonight <clears throat> is Gerard Hetman. Good evening, Council. Gerard Hetman from the Lackawanna County Commissioner's Office. Uh, to begin this evening, we're happy to announce a new effort, a new program that I just found out about actually today, but we think it'll help folks a lot in their daily lives and answer a question that a lot of us have that comes up quite frequently, where do you recycle this or where do you recycle that? We call it the Lackawanna County in uh, Office of Environmental Sustainability Hard to Recycle Initiative. Uh, it's very simply a running list of places around Lackawanna County where folks can drop off items to be recycled that wouldn't normally be accepted with a municipal recycling pickup or with uh, collections at the recycling center. Uh, it's things you see on here like antifreeze, batteries, DVDs and CDs, motor oil, microwaves, uh, scrap metals, styrofoam, and many other items, again, that we use every day, but they don't fall under those same categories that we put out for recycling, like plastic bottles, 
uh, newspapers and cardboard, things of that nature. So we hope it helps. Uh, we think it'll answer questions that we get a lot and that our Environmental Sustainability Office also receives frequently by phone and in-person visits and at public events. Uh, to, visit, to get it online, just visit www.recycling.lackawannacounty.org and the list is there. And it's a running, ongoing list. So folks who know about some place that would accept items for recycling can submit it right on the website. Uh, they can also contact our office, 963-6800, and let us know over the phone, and we'll be happy to add them to the list. So it's an ongoing interactive project, and we think it'll help answer, again, a lot of questions folks have that just come up from day to day and help keep our community cleaner and safer. So we're happy to put it out there. We'll leave the flyer with you uh, for reference, and again, we'll update it as we go on uh, when we get more submissions. Uh, secondly, the Penn State Extension Master Gardeners Program is open for training for registration for training uh, for the 2018 gardening season. Uh, it's a program that combines training and community service in the area of home horticulture, gardening, and landscaping. Members complete initial training over the course of one summer, and then they stay in the program typically for an indefinite period of time doing community service um, and upgrading with continuing training. It's something that we've seen folks now They'll get into it one year, they'll do the training, and then two or three years later, we'll see them again and they say, you know, we're glad we stuck with that. That's an awesome program. Uh, the folks do networking, they do community service projects, uh, they train the new people that come in. Most of all, they have a lot of fun. So for folks that have a green thumb at home, this is the program for you, uh, without a doubt. The classes start in early March. Folks can register by calling 570-963-6842 or email LackawannaMG, as in Master Gardeners, at psu.edu for more information. Uh, third, the Lackawanna County Conservation District is having its 2018 seedling sale this spring, currently open for orders. Uh, the, sa the sale sells various seed seedlings for trees and potted plants. Orders must be received by Friday, April 6th. We'll leave a sample order form with your office. You could also get it online by visiting www.lccd.net or call the Conservation District at 570-382-3086. Uh, fourth, the Lackawanna County Commissioner's Spring Blood Drive is now open for registration, and we have a new location this year. Uh, we've had the last three blood drives at the former Globe Store, but now with the construction, we're relocating it to the County Administration Building on the fifth floor in the conference center that we have there. Uh, it's to register to make an appointment, which the Red Cross asks you to do, just call 1-800-RED-CROSS or visit www.redcrossblood.org. We've seen between 15 and 20 donors for each of our three previous drives. We're excited to do this one. Uh, we see a lot of folks from our building donate, and we're happy to have that. And we just want to publicize it, hopefully, as much as we can this time, because without it having the street front access that we enjoyed at the Globe Store, uh, at least for right now, while the Globe is under construction, we want to get that word out there. Uh, the commissioners enjoy doing this downtown. We do see a good cross-section of folks who live and work in the downtown area come in and donate, and we're happy to provide that service downtown Scranton typically twice a year. So we're excited about the new location temporarily until we get back into the globe. Anything you can do to help us spread the word would be appreciated. Uh, last but not least, the way that this meeting falls with the schedule, our Winter Golf Clinic, the first of our Parks and Recreation programs for the year, just started, so the registration is closed. Uh, but we will have plenty more camps, clinics, and sporting leagues that are run by our Parks and Recreation Department throughout the year. Uh, the Winter Golf Clinic moved this year uh, just up the street to, from its old location to the former Goodwill, well, actually the current Goodwill Industries building, the former Bishop Kwanowski and South Catholic High School. Uh, it's a great location for it. We're happy to keep it in the city. Uh, we just had to find a new facility due to some ongoing issues uh, with the program, but it's a great success. Uh, we probably have the highest registration for it this year, and we hope to see that happen again with lots of different camps and clinics, uh, many of them for children and adolescents, but some for adults also that come up throughout the year. So stay tuned. Uh, lots of good stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much. Joan Hodewanitz. Joan Hodewana, city taxpayer, resident. Mr. Rogan, do I have your permission <coughs> to record the citizens' participation section of the council meeting? If you wish, it's also available on YouTube as well. Recording devices are supposed to be in the back of the room. According to the rules of council. Well, I have good news and bad news. First, the good news. That's always the best way to start. Tomorrow morning, starting at 10, when the mall opens, the 
a Steamtown, a marketplace at Steamtown. We're having uh, the quarterly Friends of the Scranton Public Library book sale. This time, among books and other things, we have thousands of music CDs. So it's a real bargain. So I'll leave these flyers uh, with Kathy, okay? And remind you that it ends on Sunday, 11 a.m. to 4, 4 p.m. And if on Sunday you come and you buy one of our tote bags, everything you put into it will be free. So it's such a bargain. Now for the bad news. I would like to know what you were thinking. Kudos to Marie Schumacher and Faye Franis for pointing out that since January 8th, the tr transcripts of the council minutes have not included transcriptions of citizens' participation. Now, I would like to know, one, who made that decision? Number two, what was the rationale? And number three, if it's a money issue, I'm volunteering to do the transcriptions myself at no cost. You give me access to the audio, I will do it. Am I qualified? I have five university degrees. In addition to that, I spend five years as a medical transcriptionist. If I can handle medical terminology and generic drug names and spell them all correctly, I can transcribe citizens' participation. What were you thinking? I can answer all three of those. Not, not on my time, you don't. Do, okay? you, do you want the answer or no? I want the answer on your time emotions. You owe me that courtesy as a taxpayer, because I have more to say. Now, this city has a long history of a lack of transpar transparency, full disclosure, and accountability. I depend on those minutes and that transcription for keeping track of what did I say when and what did you say to me. And the same thing with other citizen participants. This is wrong. And the other thing is, when were you going to tell the public? We were just supposed to get caught unawares that, that it wasn't being transcribed. This is sad. It's worse than sad. I'm so disappointed in the five of you, if you all knew. And I'm hoping you all discuss this and can give me an explanation. I'm so mad, I'm going to go sit down. Thank you. Les Spindler. Good evening, Council. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. First off, I want to send my thoughts and prayers to Tony DeBilio. Know Tony and his family a long time. Our daughters went to school together, and one of my daughters is still friendly with his daughter. So please, everyone out there, say a prayer for Tony. He's holding his own, so hopefully he can pull through this, but everybody's prayers will help. Uh, moving on. Last time I was here, I gave council, everyone up there, information about dangerous dog legislation. How to do it? Did anyone look into that? I guess that's a no. I've been coming here for approximately 10 years asking for this. Nobody ever does anything. You wonder why people come up here and get confrontational counsel. People come here week after week and nothing is ever done. And you wonder why people get confrontational. It's just ridiculous. People keep asking me, why do you go to council? Nothing is ever done. And I say, well, you know what, I just keep trying. But I, my patience is really wearing thin, and I can't believe you people that, uh, you have a conscience, because you don't care about us people. You care about one thing, yourselves. It's unbelievable. But that's all I have to say tonight. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Ron Elman. Hello, Council. If I 
if I may ask for a little latitude for a, a, a few minutes uh, allowed me, I, I'd like to make a little statement about the, the, these tragedy occurrences that are happening all over our country. And, uh, it's just a great sadness. It should be to any civilized, rational person. I heard on the TV that uh, pist pistols kill more than these semi-automatics and knives kill more than the guns and there was an explosion killed more children than, than either one of them. And I, I'd like to say, as far as I'm concerned, they could pick up every lousy one of these semi-automatics. But uh, these children that are protesting with the signs and all, guns, uh, uh, machine guns that they're talking about were banned when, when in Al Capone's time. They, they've had uh, very poor leadership. What started out as a solemn event, uh, the last couple of days it looked like a carnival affair with with laughing and so forth going on and I think some of the uh, people from that cesspool called Hollywood should, should just getting involved to get their name before the public. Children don't grow up in a democracy. They're told to a certain age what to do and how to live. They shouldn't be making demands to tear down the school and, and so forth. They, they don't know what they're talking about. They, they're having emotions talk for them. That's just my opinion on it. But the problem here that nobody has addressed, really, is you're dealing with irrational people. Irrational people don't care whatsoever about rational laws of society. They don't fit in. You can hear them every day on talk radio programs, making some kind of anti this or that or so forth. But irrational people don't observe rational laws, and that's the problem. You can bet your bottom dollar right now there's some misfit out there planning something like has happened in Florida. I don't know. I think Mr. Our, our president's right about nipping the bud in, uh, with education and mental health. Let me tell you something real quick. Roseanne's an associate pastor, so she took this as a surprise, really. This a little 11-year-old girl standing next to her mother a couple of Saturdays ago. The mama standing there like Mussolini, the little girl at their side. Out of the clear blue sky, this 11-year-old give Rose the finger. Now, is that normal in, in our society? Is this rational? But think of what that child is going to be like future-wise. This is what's going on right under everybody's nose. The, they both just broke out laughing and the little girl is looking at her mama like for approval. What do you do with people like this? They don't belong in the school system, that's for sure. They belong in, in, in a, getting her head examined at children's services, if you ask me. But I, I appreciate the time. Somebody asked me where I was last Monday. I said it was President's Day. They said they just thought that the troop and the Republicans had banned something, you know. 
That's what I get at the Taurus Club. Thank you, Mr. Elman. Thank you. You get a new car? I did. Oh. Have a baby on the way, so needed a uh, Oh, you're a family getting car. overpaid up there. Yes. <laughs> I smelled it. Yeah, really. I was walking, I said, well, my God, there's that beautiful smell, that odor of a new car. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Elman. I got one in 69 once, yes, <laughs> last time. Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Um, Lee Morgan. Um, you know, reading the articles in regards to the litigation the city finds itself in, I, I just, I, I kind of basically, Mr. Rogan, found your comment to be a little, not humorous, but troubling when in the Scranton Times it said <clears throat> that you were just going to shift the tax burden somewhere else. But there was never any talk of cutting the budget and if the budget was cut back in 92 the city wouldn't have sold all its assets and the city would be in a lot better shape now um, honestly and truthfully um, well where the city is now is almost ridiculous so you know but I just um, I want to applaud you know the attorney that has the city in court but it's my opinion that the people fighting the city shouldn't, the person leading that should not be an attorney. It should be a pro se litigant because um, the attorney is still an officer of the court and he won't push the court to the limit. And um, because the court has the ability to come in the back door and strip his law license if he upsets enough people. And I think that if you really want to change where our community is at and what's taking place in our country, then I think the only people that can do it are people that could understand the law and apply it no matter how the court feels about it. Because, um, I mean, that's the problem that we've had lately when uh, you look at the last attorney general who questioned the court and the high court stripped her of her license and browbeat her half to death. Um, and you know, when you, when you take a look at what Judge Gibbons is doing at this time, it's almost ridiculous. And when you bring in Judge Bat Braxton, a visiting judge, and let him hear any case here, any issue you bring in front of him is not relevant to him. He'll do anything he wants with it because he doesn't live here. He doesn't preside in this court. They bring him here, he reaches a decision, and he leaves. <clears throat> and he protects the court from taking heat for decisions. And any decision that that judge would make, I'd appeal to the high court, and I'd make, th I'd make him explain how he reached his conclusion based in law and see if he responds to the high court. But in regards to what was started to be brought out here today about, I guess, the, the meetings not being um, transcribed, whether they're still being recorded, but I don't see the transcriptionist typing anything. So it's really a very troubling thing. And I think for a city council to sit and represent an organ, a group of citizens in this community, and not record their statements as a public record for the city for as long as that record would survive. I really think that the council itself needs to resign. And I think the people in the community need to stand up and tell them that your monkey business has reached a point of just beyond silly because you have that much contempt for the people you allegedly work for. It's just arrogance of power, total disrespect for every Scrantonian and every American citizen across this whole country. Because you allegedly represent everybody in this community, but you don't want anything they have to say recorded. 
And is it legal? Did your solicitor tell you that was legal, Mr. Rogan? Mr. Morgan, you're on live TV and you'll be on YouTube. I asked you a tomorrow. question. I'm not asking about YouTube. This has nothing to do with YouTube. I asked you a question on whether your solicitor told you to follow this course of action. I didn't ask you one thing about YouTube. Our solicitor w signed off on the change. Okay. So he researched it and he said that it's fine. No, we, we asked our solicitor for an opinion. And Attorney well, Menor, I don't want to put like you on to the spot, but if you would here? like to... Would you like to talk about how this is legal, that you don't have to record a meeting so that the people in the city can understand? Mr. Morgan, the where meetings you are found, recorded. I'm asking this question through you because this is what I, I want to ask and I'm your asking, solicitor. I'm, I'm letting you know the meetings are recorded. They're on live TV right now. Well, they may be, but they're not transcribed for the record that the city will retain after this meeting's over. I'm not interested in what the people on TV see. I'm interested in what's preserved in the record of the city and the people you represent. And you know, it's very troubling that you have a smirk on your face because you have nothing but contempt for the people that you resent, represent, all five of you. And you know, to be honest with you, like I said before from this podium and the people in this city seem to revolve around, you know, there's two classes of people that came from Ireland, okay? And that, uh, most of the people who've been elected in this city over a long period of time were Irish, so the syndrome has spread out across the city. But there were Lace Curtain Irish and Shanty Irish. And the Shanty Irish are here. They're afraid to even raise their he head or their voice. But what I'm saying to this council today is it's time for you to resign because you have no respect for the people you represent. And not one of you, not one time, Thank said you, Mr. that Morgan. that change is made. Up. I can't make, quite make out the next name, but it looks like the last name is Parker or Packer. Anyone here by that name? If not, if there's anyone else who would like to address council. Evening, council. Bob Ball of Scranton. On uh, 6B, I think. There's no question in my mind that we pay taxes to have our garbage picked up. Nobody's ever justified why we're paying an additional $300 to have our garbage taken. It's not going to our garbage, it's going in the black hole. That should not even be allowed anymore. That's why we pay taxes. And as you all know, we're getting murdered in the city with taxes between the school district, the county, and the city. I think it's absurd that we should have to pay to have our garbage taken away. That's number one. <clears throat> Mr. Gohan, several weeks ago I came in here and I asked you a question to uh, take care of a transparency issue and that's at the uh, parking garage. Where are our, parking, our 500 parking spaces? Where's the money from the last two St. Patrick's Day if that money was paid to park in our spaces? Have you found that out for me? Uh, we forwarded your uh, questions to ABM and we haven't heard back from them yet. Well, it's almost three weeks, almost a month now, and we're just waiting for him to tell us what he wants to do? Well, you asked a question. I forwarded to the appropriate uh, authority. I understand that, but waiting uh, for the you answer haven't to bothered question. to pursue it? I did pursue it. We sent yeah, with a letter. A, with a letter. Will you do something to follow it up? Because quite frankly, with all this nonsense going on with that amount of money, we're all starting to smell like skunks around here. Okay? okay. <laughs> That's something that you should look into. That's something that I asked the question and not wait for a letter or a response from the mall that's killing us anyway on taxes and everything else. You had a nice meeting here with people. You want to know how to pull the city together, but you never discussed putting a fee on the university or anywhere else or going over and have a reassessment of the mall. So if you're going to bring money into the city, then let's bring money into the city instead of pushing the peas around the pot. And get me an answer. I'll be here next week and I expect the answer. Even if you got to go talk to them over there, you could go out of your way and do it. I'm tired of hearing about transparency. I want facts. The uh, other issue that I had, uh, I think the record should be preserved. There's no question. Records are a critical part of our government and I think they should be preserved and there should be a written record. If the TV breaks, 
this is all pointless. And uh, this past week, I just had some fun with the Scranton Times wanting to know about my Russian connection. I guess they're just going to have to wait. Someday, maybe they'll find out. Uh, the other thing that was really disturbing, and I'm going to get into this, I brought it up on the PCRN channel, so there's no question about it being public. Uh, Adam Rippon making a statement that being a homosexual is more important than respecting the vice president and president of the United States. He may be a skater, but there was no place in the Olympics on world television to portray his sexual orientation over his teammates, over the U.S. skating team. He didn't get a medal on his own. He got a medal because a team did it. He didn't know how to be a team player. And he disrespected each and every one of us when the other skier, uh, Ken Ward, brought down a homosexual flag or LBGT flag, whatever you want to call it. And he wrapped that around the shoulders. And they hugged and they kissed. What happened to the United States of America flag, the one behind us? the one he was there to represent. Personally, he used the format of the Olympics to discredit each and every one of us in this county. It wasn't about us, it was about him and his sexual orientation. I have no problem with somebody having a problem. Keep it to yourself. But don't make that a national thing and insult our president and our vice president because they have a different opinion, just like I do and each and every one of you do. He brought this to the format. He brought it out publicly. And he deserves the criticism back. We have that right. I wrote a letter to the Scranton Times. And the board, the editorial board, edited out my letter. Yet they put everything else we've saw on but rip on for a whole week in there about this, that, and the other. And that's what's wrong here. If you're going to do something in this country, if you're going to represent this community, then represent the community as a whole, not as an individual. Keep his orientation where it belongs and do what made him happy on his own right. But he had no business dragging this country down for his sexual orientation because he's a great homosexual. There is no gold medals given for the best performance as a homosexual. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address counsel? Faye Ferranis, I don't even know where to start. First of all, Adam Rippon did not talk about being gay at the Olympics. He said he was there to skate, not to talk about his uh, sexual orientation. And as far as his feelings about Mike Pence, I'm with them one million percent. Mike Pence is nuts. Pray away to gay, they should pray him away to a different country. You're born that way, and that's all I'm going to say about that. And anybody that says otherwise, I'll shoot them. So here's another thing. Let me tell you something. Are you getting paid? For what? Is she going to, when you talk, is she going to tape, tape, write down what you say? The, the minutes of council's votes and of the council members are still taken. Work All in motions, motion. what you say in motions Correct. too? Correct. <laughs> then why don't you want the people to, what we say? Why would you ever justify not having what we say on the record? What's the reason? Council discussed this two years ago. I don't care what you discussed. I want to know Do what your reason is. I'm explaining it to you. Council make it quick. Council did discuss this two years ago. At the time, it, the majority of council wanted to move forward with it, but the council president did not. I, I don't care about that. I want to know why you don't want the people's words. Why don't you want transparency? Why wouldn't you want transparency? For years and years and years and years, what we say is on the record. And it still is on the record in no, audio it, form. It should be in the minutes, in written words, when you go online. And it costs about $5,000 a year for the city to keep those records. Oh, really? Well, it's worth it. Well, that's your opinion, but it is it's recorded. It's not an opinion. It's fact. You have every other thing Ms. that Franis, costs. Ms. Franis, it's recorded, and it's kept at the Scranton Public Library. It's kept on YouTube permanently. Do you think senior citizens are going to go to the library to look at YouTube? Do you it, think everybody in the city, I don't even Where else to, would they get the minutes? The minutes were posted on the city's website. Listen YouTube is also available They also may online. want to print them out. We they may can't have, print them. It may you be can't a print them out on YouTube. Ms. Frannis, it may be a generational difference, but there's a cost savings there oh, for the yeah. same transparency. Is she getting paid less for not doing all of it tonight? Yes. She's getting paid less. Correct. You, she took a pay cut. Correct. Since when? Since, Jan since January 1st. 
it should save the city about $5,000 a year. Oh, we're thrilled. We're thrilled. You're wrong in doing this. Another thing, why would you ever continue to have meetings on Monday night? So far you've missed two. And the law says that you, the city law says that you shall have meetings once a week. Shall. Shall doesn't mean may. Shall means shall. So why would you continue to have meetings on Monday night? Don't give me the crap about you want to, uh, you're busy, too busy to make it any other night. You were not too busy last year and every other year to have it on a Thursday night. So are you going to continue to have them on Monday nights when all the holidays fall on a Monday and you don't have the meeting that week? Meetings will continue to be on Mondays you're for the rest of the year. You're a sarcastic son of a gun. You are. These meetings should not be on Monday night. Are you getting paid for the meetings that you missed? Yes. Did you do anything? No. You had a meeting here for this commission for Make Everything Good in Scranton on Thursday. You should have had a council meeting on Thursday, not that meeting. The meeting that nobody could say anything bad about Scranton. You could only come if you had things in good. Well, there's nothing good to say. So, in the caucuses in the back room, are you going to have them out here when somebody comes in to talk, or are you going to keep them hidden in the back room? It depends on the speaker. But oh, we yeah, have if they want to speak, if they want to, is that what you're going to say, Pat? We have had them out here already yeah, this year. Yeah, I know, year. and if they don't want to, are you going to say, then you don't have to? It's a decision made by council, depending on the speaker. Depending there, on the speaker. There if the speaker wants to come, if they don't want to come out front, then I'd say to them, don't come out front, you don't go in the back either. You don't come at all. If they can't come out here and let the people know what's going on instead of keeping things behind closed doors, you're really a bunch of really bad, bad people up there. Billy Gunn, I hope you address this in motions. Bill, do you think these transcripts should be hidden from the people? These minutes? I, I'll explain that in fifth order because I don't want to take your time and it's going to take me a minute or two to explain. And Pat Rogan, let me ask you one more thing because I want this on the record because this garbage fee is still, is still in limbo. We never got the study back yet, Mr. Evans the study that they were given all this money for. Uh, did you, I want you to say it right here and now, December 2013, did you, Pat Rogan, vote to increase the garbage fee from $178 to $300? Yes. So you're the reason. You're, if you had voted no, this garbage fee would have stayed at $178. So, but you had all those flyers sent out saying that I voted against the garbage fee. Pat Rogan voted against the garbage fee. That's how you got elected, on lies. So now we're still paying this garbage fee because you had all those flyers sent out with lies all over them. And then when I came to that meeting and asked you, you lied to me right to my face. And you're, you're council president? What, who owes you what? Court right? What did you do for him? Everything you wanted. Thank you, Ms. Frannis. You should resign. You should be thrown out of office. And to hide these minutes from the people. I don't care about $5,000. You blow it every place else. You give your buddies raises. Taking care of your friends all the time, five thousand dollars. That's nothing for you people. What about what about Ned Abrahamson? You lined his pockets with two hundred thousand dollars, with no record, no contract, and you're worried about five thousand dollars since when? Thank you, Ms. Francis. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Uh, Marie Schumacher. Uh, first, I would like to. Uh, say it would have been nice if you if we had not discovered what you have done to us and uh, the message you have provided to us which is that you don't care about what we say and you don't care if anybody else can access what we say and apparently your egos are way too fragile to uh, have things in print so that if people say nasty things about you they can't go back and, and find them. I think you should vote tonight to take up uh, Joan Hodanowitz's offer to transcribe them and post them on the uh, Scranton City website. Um, okay, moving on. I was angry at first and uh, I sent a letter to the editor, which I hope will get posted. And I, uh, I, I just think it's, it's terrible that you've been hiding this and that you care so little about what the people say. Um, but now I'm just disappointed. But I will continue to pray for you. I do that to everybody. Uh, the status of the Arcadis report that Mr. Bolzoni said would be available in 10 months. Status? We were told it's coming soon, that's all I can tell you. Soon, how many, how many days are in soon? 
Anywhere from one to uh, infinity. Sorry. Not funny. <coughs> not know, funny. No, it's not funny. It's been going on too Not long. funny at all. Next are city streets. The potholes are many. They are deep and wide, like the old song says. Uh, Mr. Gone, I gave you material last year on that pothole machine that people can, uh, that we can hire. Um, I would suggest that you look into that because there's so many I don't know how they're going to be uh, repaired but I know the damage it's doing to automobiles uh, now I can go back to April 6 2005 uh, this is talking about the uh, DPW one of the crews dispatched to fill Scranton's potholes will be the city's one-year-old pothole repair machine the $47,000 contraption is like a big mixer that makes asphalt on the spot. Workers just pour oil and stone in and the sticky patch comes out. Mr. Matthews said he is looking forward to getting the machine on the road again. It was out of commission for several weeks while the department worked to clear out its clogged piping. Crews had been using stone with too many fine particles, he said. It was like cholesterol in your veins. We got a new order of clean stone and we're set to go. Where is that machine today? I am not exactly sure, but I can uh, find out. I would certainly like it. On, on agenda items tonight, uh, 5D. As I recall, the UDAG account uh, was running out of money. What is the current balance in the UDAG account? Who's OECD? person I am I'll find out for you okay uh, how many municipalities have received funding from the last year's 2.3 million dollar grant and in what amounts would you also find that out how many other municipalities have made beds available for chronic homeless individuals and families over the past two years with these funds or does Scranton uh, have the privilege of of keeping all of these people are we the county repository for the homeless? I would like an answer to that. Uh, 5F, the resolution, uh, the agenda description makes it sound as though the requested funds will be helping women start businesses. But when you read the backup, you find it is all going to renovate 526, 530 Cedar Avenue, the current People's Security Bank which I find deceptive. Uh, I also have some issues with United Neighborhood Center, who, as you may recall from last year, had failed to sell properties built by HUD for home ownership, but were being rented. And UNC did not pay the required property taxes until the end of October. I would like to know also if UNC is uh, current on all of their taxes and the repayment of their o all of their OECD borrowing because I know in the past they've renegotiated and renegotiated and I'm not sure they are um... okay I'll be back to the exit plan next week and I do hope you vote to uh, allow Ms. O'Donowitz to transcribe the public comment and make them available publicly thank, thank you. you is there anyone else who would like to address council Fifth order, 5A motions. Uh, prior to Mr. Perry speaking, I guess since I speak last, I'm going to address the, the item of uh, the transcription of the public participation portion. This is something that was discussed, um, as I mentioned previously, two years ago um, when Granicus was um, rolled out. This was, in some members' minds, the offset to cut some of that cost. Um, at the time, it didn't happen. During reorganization, we did discuss this idea um, the majority of council thought that it was a good decision to save on the cost savings um, as I mentioned every city council meeting is broadcast live through ECTV every city council meeting is on record at the Scranton Public Library every city council meeting is permanently uploaded to YouTube through the ECTV channel and personally again maybe it's because I'm younger and I have a different perspective on some of these things I would pers I think video and audio is much more transparent than the written word. Oftentimes there are things that may have been said in jest or sarcastically that don't translate through on pen and paper. So I personally believe being able to physically see 
the, me the meetings from gavel to gavel are more transparent than anything. Um, secondly, council did look at other, what other towns in, our, in Lackawanna County are doing, and there's not one council that's more transparent than what C Scranton City Council is doing. From live meetings to re pre repeat broadcasts of live meetings to them being available literally the next day on YouTube for anyone to review what was said. Um, all of council's motions and votes are still recorded word for word. Um, that's the most important part of our meeting is the votes of council. That is, like I said, the, the legislative portion of the meeting. Um, I would be interested in seeing if what Mrs. Hodewanitz mentioned is something that we could do. If it's free of charge, it's free. There's, I don't see why we wouldn't do it if it's something that's legal and can be done. Um, so that's something I am open to looking into again. This was strictly a cost-saving cost measure because of the duplication and how many different ways the meetings are transmitted. And I personally believe the audio and video component is the most strong. Um, and I'll continue to believe that. I'm sure there'll be more discussion on that. Um, Mr. Perry, any motions or comments? I have, a, I have a couple comments. Uh, the first one is I received uh, a call about uh, West Hampton or Hampton Street in West Side. Uh, there seems to be an issue with the six, seven, and eight hundred block with parking on both sides of the streets. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is just a one side parking section of Hampton Street uh, with no parking on the south side. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure that we might have to go back and check uh, previous ordinance. Uh, but if we could, Mrs. Reed, if we could just do a follow-up with that. And I guess the <laughs> issue is right now the signs aren't there anymore. So I don't know if, I don't think they were taken down by DPW or the Scranton Police Department. Uh, they might have been taken down other means. Uh, so let's just make sure that the ordinance is still on the book for single side street parking on the 6, 7, and 8 of Hampton. And if it is, we're going to need uh, DPW up there to install some new signage. And then maybe just a follow-up reply or uh, email to the Scranton Police Department just to a follow-up on uh, enforcing the one side street parking. Uh, and also, Mr. Reed, I don't know if I got an email, I think we all did over the weekend about a street lights. I don't know if anybody forwarded it to you yet. Uh, on the corner of 7th street, 17th and Division, there was a pole down. PP now replaced the pole, and the light isn't uh, on the pole yet. Uh, the light's been ordered, but it hasn't been installed yet. So if we can just do a follow-up uh, with DPWC, if they receive the light, and if that's going to go up anytime soon, just to get a status on that. Uh, let's see, I want to thank uh, Mr. Evans and Mr. Gahan for the idea session on Thursday. I know they'll have more to say about that. Uh, I thought it was a great collaboration between business and commerce to come together and uh, for the sole purpose of removing barriers that prevent current businesses from succeeding and prospective businesses from moving into the city. I think it was a great first step. Uh, a second step to that idea session was having uh, Mr. Durkin uh, from the Greater Chamber of Scranton come in today, uh, caucus, and spoke with us. Uh, I thought he backed us up uh, uh, greatly, and I think his input uh, as we go through it, this is going to be fantastic. Uh, I won't take uh, too much of your guys' thunder. I know you'll want to talk about it, but uh, it was great to be a part of it, and uh, I, you know, I definitely want to work forward with this and, and uh, move on. Uh, and finally, I just want to throw my thoughts out to Tony DeBilio and his family uh, for that unfortunate event two nights ago. Uh, you know, his injury is severe, and you know, we're all pulling for him to get out and make a quick recovery. Uh, God bless. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Donahue, any motions or comments? Uh, yes, just to keep going with what Mr. Perry just said, um, I would like to also offer, and I believe I'm speaking for many people throughout the city, um, by offering our best wishes and prayers for a speedy recovery to Tony DeBilio and the entire DeBilio family. I can't begin to imagine what they're going through, but hopefully it will give them some comfort to know that there are countless people across the city and beyond that will be there to support and assist, and assist them in their recovery. Um, one of the best things about our community is our ability to come together to help those in their time of need. Um, on Thursday night, we had our first idea session, and I would just like to commend the session's co-chairs, Councilman Evans and Gawain, for a job well done. Um, from my perspective, being new to council, I found it to be tremendously informative as well as productive. Uh, but now we must put those ideas into action. I think the main theme that was expressed throughout the session was a need for 
the city to be more user friendly from a customer service perspective. And I look forward to working with my colleagues on council and with the administration to continuously work to, you know, solve that issue and to con continuously get better. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Evans, do you have any motions or comments? Uh, just a few <laughs> things. On the minutes, uh, our intent was with the $5,000 that we're saving was to actually increase some of our uh, ways we can use granite because even more and create a more uh, transparent uh, meeting in place of that. But I will agree that if Mrs. Hodawanis can take that up and we can find a way to make that work, then we should absolutely take you up on your offer. So we'll definitely look into that. Um, in many ways, it's been a kind of a both tragic and hopeful week in our part of the world. You know, the senseless tragedy of a, 20, a young 28-year-old being struck and killed by a car by walking near the Heritage Valley Trail a few days ago still resonates with me. For one, I'm a regular walker in that area, but mostly because one of my sons is 20 years old. So I can only begin to imagine the pain the family is going through. My deepest thoughts and prayers for all of his friends and his family. And then this morning you wake up and see another tragic occurrence to read about in the morning paper, another senseless shooting, one troubled life is over, another light changed forever. Another senseless shooting. I count Tony DiBilio as a friend. We served many years ago on the Home Rules Charter Study Commission. And I think we had a mutual respect and friendship ever since then. Tony's a decent, kind, and caring person among his many attributes. And thankfully, according to his brother Gary, he's responding positively. So we will continue to pray for Tony and his family. And we should continue to pray for an end to this seemingly unending violence that we have in our society uh, day in and day out. On another note, while it doesn't quite seem as important in light of those events. Our idea sessions on Thursday were encouraging, well received, positive, and yes, they were hopeful. We will begin working on several of those suggestions very soon. In fact, some of the work has already begun. So thank you again for all who participated, my fellow councilmen who have supported this idea from the very beginning, and members of the administration who attended. It was remarkable to have such a positive evening with Denise Chambers uh, last Thursday evening. And finally, Thursday is March 1st. It is St. David's Day, the patron saint of Wales. I would like to wish my family and friends of Welsh descent and all of those with Welsh descent in our community a very happy St. David's Day. Kim Ruambeth, Wales forever. Thank you. Mr. Gaughan, any motions or comments? Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, I was unaware that uh, transcription of public comment had ceased. I wish somebody would have told me that. Um, and I would like to know who authorized the solicitor to sign off on it and what was signed off on. Now, I will say that there were several discussions uh, held about, and I actually brought this up, about automating, possibly automating that process to save money. But it wouldn't, it would have taken place after we would have talked with Granicus first, which I was in the process of doing. Uh, to possibly link the video with the transcription which would have been automated through the audio if that makes sense to anybody but it would have been a way to save money but no I do not agree with uh, first of all not publicly discussing making a move like that number one and number two doing it without making uh, members aware because I was not aware that um, apparently since January 1st uh, the public comment portion of the meetings were not being transcribed so uh, I do not agree with that, number one. Uh, number two, there were several uh, issues with the Green Ridge Senior Apartments off of Dixon Avenue that I, I mentioned uh, a month or two ago. Um, and I have been in contact with the uh, Lackawanna County Department of Human Services Area Agency on Aging. Um, there will be a meeting held with Jason Kavulich, who is the director of that department, um, and Nancy Barace, who's the solicitor uh, she special, special, specializes in elder law. Uh, that meeting will be held Monday, March 5th at 3 p.m. at uh, 2300 Adams Avenue on Marywood Campus, uh, Tony uh, Damiano Center for Student Life. Uh, there's parking behind the building. And all of those seniors who uh, were sharing their concerns with me uh, are urged to attend and uh, there will be um, flyers passed out at the apartment building. 
Um, the Arcata stormwater study came up tonight. Uh, it's my hope that when that is complete, we attempt to schedule a public caucus with both the administration and members of Arcata so that they can present their report to City Council and give us an opportunity to ask questions. I also received several complaints about uh, the area in North Scranton, West Market Street, turning into East Market Street. Uh, the intersection where the cobblestone meets the pavement um, is treacherous and people are actually losing the front end of their car uh, from the bump there. So uh, Mrs. Reed did reach out to DPW and hopefully that situation is taken care of. I would also like, as my colleagues did, to send my prayers out to uh, Tony DeBilio and the uh, tragedy that occurred uh, this past weekend. Um, yeah, just senseless violence, and he is a good uh, family man, and I'm, I, I think we're all pulling for him uh, to pull through. And also the uh, recent tragedy down in Florida. You know, this may not be the forum to talk about this, but I feel... Uh, it's necessary. Um, you know, to me, it just seems like we've plunged into this darkness of violence and, and just this, this crazy, uh, crazy world that we live in where everything seems backwards at this point. But if there was any good that came out of the tragedy in Florida, it was the movement that is occurring uh, across the country uh, with the young people who, who survived the tragedy uh, as part of what they're calling March for Our Lives. So I'd like to take a second and just read the mission statement, because I think it is important uh, for this council and for any elected official, for any leader, and all of the people in this community to be aware of the movement that is taking place. Not one more. We cannot allow one more child to be shot at school. We cannot allow one more teacher to make a choice to jump in front of a firing assault rifle to save the lives of students. We cannot allow one more family to wait for a call that never comes. Our schools are unsafe. Our children and our teachers are dying. We must make it our top priority to save these lives. March for Our Lives is created by, inspired by, and led by students across the country who will no longer risk their lives waiting for someone else to take action to stop the epidemic of mass school shootings that has become all too familiar. In the tragic wake of the 17 lives brutally cut short in Florida, politicians are telling us that now is not the time to talk about guns. March for Our Lives believes the time is now. On March 24th, the kids and families of March for Our Lives will take to the streets of Washington, D.C. to demand that their lives and safety become a priority. The collective voices of the March of Our Lives movement will be heard. School safety is not a political issue. There cannot be two sides to doing everything in our power to ensure the lives and futures of children who are at risk of dying when they should be learning, playing, and growing. The mission and focus of March for Our Lives is to demand that a comprehensive and effective bill be immediately brought before Congress to address these gun issues. No special interest group, no political agenda is more critical than timely passage of legislation to effectively address the gun violence issues that are rampant throughout the United States. Every kid in this country now goes to school wondering if this day might be their last. We live in fear. It doesn't have to be this way. Change is coming and it starts now, inspired by and led by the kids who are our hope for the future. Their young voices will be heard. Stand with us on March 24th. Refuse to allow one more needless death. And I bring this up and I read that mission statement because uh, I believe that a vigil and a march is being organized in the city of Scranton uh, on March 24th to coincide with the March on Washington uh, on the same day. And this march in Scranton, from what I understand, is being organized by our local high school and college students. And uh, obviously I'll announce more information when it becomes available. But just to end uh, my comment on this, you know, I, I refuse to accept this as a, as a leader in our community, I refuse to accept this violence as a new normal, you know, that we have to live with this. Um, I think we can do better. Violence breeds violence, and it starts with our community. It starts with the city of Scranton and places uh, where those children live down in Florida. So I, I think that we can do far better than we're doing now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gone.
Um, I did mention this during the prayer at the beginning of the meeting, but I do want to mention again um, my thoughts and prayers with Tony DeBilio and his family. Um, I grew up just a couple blocks away from uh, Big Z's. My mom still lives a couple blocks away from Big Z's where the shooting occurred. Um, and it's very scary, you know, something like this happening um, in our community. It was completely senseless, um, you know, completely random. Um, so again, our, our thoughts and prayers are with uh, especially Tony, Tony and his entire family. Um, I do want to read a um, postcard that we received. Um, I think we all received it. It was addressed to the city council members, Mayor Courtright, Police Chief Carl Graziano. Um, this was regarding the alternative to incarceration program that was set up. Um, it says, thank you for setting up an alternative to incarceration for drug addicts. My nephew who died of a drug overdose last May might still be alive if he had this opportunity. Um, I'm not gonna read her name, but um, it is pretty powerful that you know, people are recognizing that this program um, may save somebody's life and give them, give them a second chance first, just locking them up and uh, throwing away the key. Um, I wanna thank uh, Councilman Evans and Councilman Gons for hosting the idea session last week. I apologize, I wasn't able to make it. I was out of town um, part of the day for work. Um, but I did communicate with Councilman Evans and did receive a list of items that took place at that idea session. And I really do think that it gives us um, some different perspectives. You know, on the daily, weekly meetings, we do um, tend to hear from some of the same people. Not that that's a bad thing, but um, it is nice to hear from other people sometimes. Um, so I'd like to thank them for a job well done with that idea session. And it's definitely something that um, you know, continue to support and continue to do as, as the years go on. Um, today, Bob Durkin did give us a brief um, overview on some of the economic development items that are going on in the city um, and in the county. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Durkin for his leadership at the Chamber of Commerce and for coming in to give us this update. Um, there are a number of items where I think the city and the Chamber of Commerce can work together much more collaboratively to achieve um, these goals. Um, there are many different items, some of them that we tried to do, um, tried to initiate over the last few years, some different tax incentives for development in the city. Um, but I think we need to work with the chamber and take that a step further. Um, nationally, the economy is very strong. Even within our county, the economy is very strong. Um, and unfortunately, it seems that Scranton for decades has been left behind. Um, so anything that we could do that's creative, working with the Chamber of Commerce to help attract um, good family sustaining jobs to our area is something we have to do. And one of the items that really stuck out that Mr. Durkin mentioned to me is that in the past, um, when a business was looking to locate to a city, it was more, well, what are you gonna give me or what are you gonna get for us? And now it's more based on workforce. Um, so it really starts with our education and our educational systems. And within the city of Scranton, we're very fortunate to have great universities, great medical school, um, trade schools. Um, but we need to continue to work to keep that talent here. Um, unfortunately, many of the people I went to college with at the University of Scranton don't live in the city, and many of them don't even live in the state anymore. Um, and uh, you know that, unfortunately, is the norm. And that's something we have to work to change to help foster economic development within our city. And that is all for now. Thank you. 5B for introduction and ordinance creating and establishing special city account number is noted entitled Sorrente Emergency Center for the receipt and distribution of grant funds from the Pennsylvania Governor's Office Law Enforcement Activities Appropriations Grant Funding in order to provide funding to convert the Sorrente Memorial Army Reserve Center into an emergency services center. At this time, I'll we'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C for introduction, an ordinance establishing permit parking on the even side of the 900 block of Olive Street from 912 Olive Street East to Quincy Avenue and on the odd side from 915 Olive Street East to Quincy Avenue. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. 5C. 5C. So Thank you. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question. Um, in the backup, it says that um, obviously the parking study was conducted, but I don't see a copy of that. So if we could ask for that before a final vote. 
I'd appreciate it. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5D for introduction and ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to disperse $6,000 from the UDAG repayment account into which Urban Development Action Grants repayments are deposited. This will cover the city of Scranton's share of costs for the United Neighborhood Centers of Northeastern Pennsylvania to administer the continuum of care for Lackawanna County during the period July 1, 2017 through June 30, 2018. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5E for introduction of resolution authorizing the director of the Department of Public Works of the City of Scranton to sign and submit the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation application for traffic signal approval for traffic signal permit number 6358 to upgrade existing traffic signal at Greenridge Street and Sanderson Avenue. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5F for introduction of resolution ratifying and approving of the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton on behalf of the United Neighborhood Centers, United Neighborhood Community Development Corporation to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania acting through the Commonwealth Financing Authority for a local share account grant pursuant to the PA Resource Development and Gaming Act in the amount of $120,000 for the project to be known as South Scranton Women's Business Incubator Project located at 526 530 Cedar Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials of the city of Scranton to accept the grant if successful and execute and enter into a local share account grant contract and commitment letter with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to accept and utilize the grant in the amount of $120,000 awarded by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for such project. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5F be introduced into its proper committee. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question. Just wanted to say uh, what a remarkable transformation uh, this block of Cedar Avenue has gone through. And uh, I support this project 100%. Uh, and I think uh, only good things will come from it. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, what a lot of people don't know about this project, too, is that uh, People's Security actually donated this building to UN, uh, UNCDC. So um, they deserve a lot of credit as well for their participation in this. And I think the concept of a, business, a women's business incubator, I think, is far uh, overdue. So I'm very much in favor of this project. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file of the council number three, 2018, an ordinance establishing permit parking on the easterly even side only of the 300 block of Taylor Avenue from 316 to 330 Taylor Avenue. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6B, reading by title, file of the council number 4, 2018, an ordinance amending file of the council number 17, 1994, entitled, an ordinance as amended, authorizing the governing body of the city of Scranton to enact a waste disposal and collection fee for the purpose of raising revenue to cover the waste disposal and collection costs incurred by the city of Scranton for the disposal of refuse by imposing a waste disposal and collection fee of $300 for calendar year 2018 and the same shall remain in full force and effect annually thereafter. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, resolution number 11, 2018, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials for the city of Scranton to enter into a loan assumption agreement with Carl Von Luger, LLC, wherein Carl Von Luger, LLC, will assume the loan amount of $40,000, Terra Preta, LLC, received from the city of Scranton 
through the Community Development Block Grant Program project number as noted. What is the recommendation for the Chair for the Committee on Community Development? As Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption Resolution Number 12, 2018, authorizing the Mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a license agreement between the County of Lackawanna, a political subdivision of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and the City of Scranton, a political subdivision of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, to permit the county to use utility poles owned by the city for the purpose of hanging fiber optic communication lines for the new Lackawanna County Government Center. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for Adoption, Resolution Number 13, 2018, authorizing the Mayor and other appropriate city officials for the City of Scranton to enter into a loan to grant agreement and make a loan grant from the City of Scranton's Business and Industry Loan to Grant Program, project number as noted in an amount not to exceed $250,000 to Delta Medics PC to assist an eligible project. What is the recommendation for the Chair for the Committee on Community Development? As Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for Adoption. Resolution number 14, 2018, ratifying and approving the submission of the grant application by the grant manager of the City of Scranton, Lackawanna County, for a Pennsylvania Department of Transportation Green Light Go program grant to replace the traffic signal at Greenridge Street and Wyoming Avenue, and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to accept and disperse the grant funds in the amount of $135,200 to replace the traffic signal at Greenridge Street and Wyoming Avenue. What is the recommendation for the Chair for the Committee on Public Safety? As Chair for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Meetings adjourned.